Hello and welcome to Good Life, the health show with me, Pooja. Well, this is a show that focuses on providing you with solutions to your health-related issues, lifestyle and much more. Well, viewers, today the topic that we will be discussing about is an issue that is faced by thousands of women. Now, having menstrual cramps is one of the most common or maybe you can say it's one of the most annoying parts of your period. They can strike right before your period starts or during that time of the month when you are going through your menstrual cycle. For some women, the discomfort is merely annoying, but for others, menstrual cramps can be severe enough to interfere with their day-to-day -day activities for a few days every month. So, to discuss on this, we are being joined today by Dr. Aminakshi Dutta, gynecologist from Pratiksha Hospital. So, not to waste any more time, I'll straight away move to her and talk more on the topic which we have taken today. Well, thank you so much, Doctor, for joining to Good Life, the health show. So, Doctor, today the topic which we have taken is a talk of the town, we can say. Right. Now, what are the common problems related to menstruation, Doctor? Okay, first of all, good afternoon. Yeah. Yeah, and thank you for having me on this show. I'm discussing with our uh, problems related to menstruations. As you have mentioned, the most common problem is cramps, menstrual cramps, which a woman may experience right for, for one day, two day, or some women experience it throughout their uh, during the whole flow. But uh, how to handle with your pure cramps? Okay. Whether whether your cramps have changed the pattern in the sense that first used to have only on the first day, second day, now you're having even before the onset of your periods or the intensity of the cramps have changed or uh, women with this active sexual life, if the pain is more during her sexual activity, then these are the times that you should be worried about. Or if the um, cr pains have increased to such intensity that you're having mo problems with your bowel movements, mm -hmm. problems with your bladder movements, then these are the uh, warning signs that you should meet your gynec and discuss your problems. Okay, so uh, these are some of the common problems, doctor. Right. And uh, if any of the person or any of the women find these kind of common problems mm -hmm. and they are not uh, having an ease with it, so they should immediately go and see a doctor, isn't it, doctor? Now, if we talk about uh, the flow of uh, the menstrual problems which uh, everybody goes through every month. Now, if we talk about the flow, it depends on person to person, isn't it, doctor? Right. So, what do you have to say on that? Yeah, flow, we should not generalize that this should be the flow pattern for each woman some may have their periods only for two days right from her onset of menarche for that woman or that girl that pattern is normal or some women may bleed say for five to seven days also but if that is the pattern for her right from the beginning that's normal for her we should be worried now I'm telling you the times when we should be worried when there is a sudden change in the pattern of bleeding okay. Mm -hmm. Suppose you were bleeding for five to seven days, then mm -hmm. suddenly it has come down to one or two days. Right. And mm -hmm. suppose you were bleeding always for one to two days and now your duration has increased, say, from seven days. Or we have seen women bleeding for eight to ten days. Then if there is a sudden change, mm -hmm. then you should again see your gynec. Okay, okay. It's not necessary that there will be a problem. Sometimes mm -hmm. it happens because mm -hmm. as our body is not a static condition, similarly the hormones in our body which regulates the menstrual cycle are not static. Okay. There is always up and down. Up and down. Up and down so that it reflects in the menstrual cycle. If everything is fine, if there are no changes in your weight, no changes in your um, dietary habits, no changes in your lifestyle, mm. your stress levels, like suddenly there is no like no amount uh, sudden increase in your stress then it's okay mm -hmm. uh, because these everything depends on the lifestyle as lifestyle, well doctor absolutely. doctor will have more conversation but we have to take a break all right okay. viewers uh, we'll slip into a short break but do come back soon because we have lots more on the other side Welcome back viewers, you're still watching Good Life The Health Show with me Pooja and we are having a fruitful discussion with Dr. Aminakshi Datta. Now doctor, coming back to you again, we earlier to the break, we had an idea about the common problems of mm. menstrual. Now if we talk about, uh, like, tell us about the menstrual cramps, why does it occur, it happens with every woman, mm. so it depends on person to person as well, so why such cramps doctor? 
See, during the menstruation, mm. our body in, uh, increases the flow to the pelvic organs. Mm. That is a physiological thing. Okay. Because as we have we had discussed in the previous mm. uh, discussions, that each menstrual cycle, the body prepares the uterus to receive a baby. Mm -hmm. So that way it increases the blood flow. Okay. So wherever there is, you can imagine where what happens when the blood flow comes out of there is more blood flow, there is congestion. Mm -hmm. So that congestion leads to the basic pain. That okay. is the basic uh, and a very physiological change and that is the uh, something not to be worried about. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. That pain is there. The, mostly it is congestion but some says it is like uh, uh, for unmarried girls who uh, in future if they undergo a vaginal delivery mm -hmm. there is a dilatation of the cervix that is the passage the okay. birth passage mm. with that also periods pain come down mm -hmm. because there is expansion mm. of your organs mm. but that is not true always it okay. might happen so that is also spasmodic pain and the congestive pain mm -hmm. so this is the basic thing mm -hmm. and you need not be uh, worried about the periods pain it is very normal as I have always to, uh, told mm -hmm. you and it depends uh, again it's change. It's not that every woman will have it's not that if you don't have something is abnormal with mm -hmm. our body mm -hmm. and moreover as I have said increased blood flow increase in the anti-inflammatory things the prostaglandins all these are increased during the menstrual time in the pelvic region okay there's a lot of blood supply a lot of lymphatic drainage these mm -hmm. leads to the pain and discomfort and all the symptoms associated with Okay. Menstruation. Now, does it also depend with the number of days the person is having the pain or uh, depends on uh, the extremity of the pain as well if uh, the person is uh, having an abnormal kind of pain. Exactly. So then is the right time to see a doctor, isn't it? Exactly. So, mm -hmm. uh, if there is a change in intensity of the intensity pain. Intensity of the pain. If the pain intensity has increased mm. and the duration before, suppose you are having only for one or two days, but now you are seeing that you are having throughout your periods. Mm. Those are the times you really need to be worried about mm. and see your doctor. Okay. Now, doctor, is there a certain age which is the age group we are talking about mm. like suppose the one who has just got her periods mm. and uh, the ones uh, who are already having periods for a long years or so if we talk about the age group which mm. we see nowadays and does it happen with everybody or is it something related with the age group as well? Uh, some girls, some girls, they mm. experience, uh, this is scientifically called dysmenorrhea. Dysmenorrhea. Yeah, right from the age of menarche. That mm. means the first periods. First they, period. Till the, till her reproductive age or till the last. Mm. The, as I told you, some says that mm. if you undergo vaginal delivery, there is a relief of menstrual pain mm. because mm. the cervix dilates. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, with the increase in the cesarean sections and all, mm -hmm. so we are seeing that this hasn't worked out much. Mm -hmm. So some may, women may experience right from the first day to the last, some may experience again in their active lives of their 20s, 30s, mm -hmm. or some may experience towards the end of their uh, this menstrual life. It's not okay. fixed, nothing mm -hmm. is fixed. Mm. Okay, so nothing is fixed. So is there any risk also doctor, if uh, the person is having extreme pain? Yeah, yeah, there is associated maybe with some pathology like most mm -hmm. commonly endometriosis. Okay. Endometriosis or commonly people call it chocolate cyst. Mm -hmm. That means as the bleeding occurs inside, sometimes there is bleeding inside the ovaries. Mm. It's a very, I'm saying in a very layman term, they might mm -hmm. be bleeding mm -hmm. inside the ovaries. Okay. It gets collected. So old blood looks like what? Chocolate. Mm -hmm. So the, it got the name of chocolate cyst. So it keeps mm -hmm. on increasing and old blood will attract all the anti-inflammatory chemicals, mm -hmm. it will lead to all the additions and increase in pain, difficulty in conception and, uh, and constant discomfort in the mm -hmm. pelvic area. Okay. Then there is another condition which is associated with extreme levels of pain during periods, it's usually in the 30s or late 40s, mm -hmm. it's called adenomyosis, mm -hmm. where these, um, this is uh, where the, these glands which should be in, in, uh, inside the uterine cavity, mm -hmm. sometimes those glands grow in the muscle layer of the uterine, of the uterus, mm. then those during periods they become active. Okay. So it leads to extreme pain in the pelvis. That pain is excruciating pain. Okay. It is called adenomyosis, not mm -hmm. very common. It is not that, it is also not very rare. So um, mm -hmm. these are the usual okay. conditions associated. Mm -hmm. And if you talk about the symptoms, uh, like it is, it varies from person to person as well, but it is 
almost common in every woman, isn't yeah. it, doctor? Yeah. Now, if we talk about the general symptoms like for a menstrual cramps or uh, a premenstrual problems uh, yeah. the ladies face, yeah. so what are those, doctor? Uh, yeah. Hmm. Nowadays, these premenstrual symptoms, more and more women are experiencing, mm -hmm. and it may it varies from person to person. It mm. it might involve right from the head, anything right till the toe. Okay. Most commonly, are mood changes, mm -hmm. then your water retention leading to your bloatingness. You mm -hmm. feel heavy. Mm. And then changes in your bowel habits, your mm -hmm. dietary habits. Then mm -hmm. there's all these eruptions, breakouts in your skin. Mm -hmm. There might be hair fall. That's why it varies from woman to woman. But most okay. commonly is like you feel uh, more of lethargy, mood mm -hmm. changes, mm -hmm. then pelvic discomfort. Mm -hmm. And, and there are ways to take mm -hmm. care of these. If okay. you know that you are suffering these mm -hmm. premenstrual symptoms, you just simply take evening primrose oil supplements. Okay. And it does magic to okay. your symptoms. But it doesn't... The effects will not come within a month or so. Mm -hmm. You have to take for two, three months. Mm -hmm. Evening primrose oil. So are taking these supplements safe, doctor? Absolutely, Absolutely safe. Absolutely. Okay. And they really improves your lifestyle. Because, you know, mm -hmm. that thing will come to your mind that I'm going to get my periods. And you start fighting with your friends, mm -hmm. with your family members. Mm -hmm. yeah, and your body is also not... Uh, as up to the mark. Mm -hmm. So these will really help. Okay. Now, is it something to do with the psychological problems also, doctor, with uh, like not all women, but like uh, yeah. there are some section of people like they'll have a psychological uh, thing that, oh, my dates are nearing. Oh, Ex I have. Yeah, so there, yeah. Are. there are some women, hmm. they're obsessed because hmm. they're obsessed with that uh, the obsession of their premenstrual symptoms. Ha. And their mood swings are like, it's very difficult to keep up. We have seen one or two. It's not very common. Mm -hmm. More so your family members will be able to comment more on these symptoms. And mm -hmm. that woman is also very much aware. Mm -hmm. It is seen more in these um, 30s. Okay. Uh, lay, early 40s, these mm -hmm. uh, women are suffering with more of these. Okay. Things. Now, uh, doctor, the treatment part, or what we can say is that uh, if a person can have some home remedies also at home itself, and later depends on the case, uh, if it's extreme, mm -hmm. then one has to, of course, go and see a doctor. Right. Now, what are the things, like, what are the treatment procedure that can one person can do mm -hmm. at home itself? To take first and foremost, you have to understand your body. Mm -hmm. You will have to be very observant about your symptoms. As I told you, if there is change or you're not being able to bear, then mm -hmm. you have to see your gynec. Otherwise, mm -hmm. very simple yoga postures are there. Okay. You can look up in the net. They are, and yoga has come up in a big way in mm. helping in these problems. Mm. And then some of the dietary supplements, like having lots of green leafy vegetables, lots of fibers, mm -hmm. especially during the menstrual days. Mm. Then uh, avoiding excessive carbs, okay. excessive sugar, mm. and then drinking lots of water. And you know, uh, one uh, very uh, home thing is that soft, hmm. soft, having hmm. soft is uh, really helpful. Okay. And having uh, again warm water bath, mm -hmm. dark chocolates, a mm -hmm. bit of coffee, okay. all these really works out. Mm -hmm. So these are some of uh, the basic things like basic one can things. opt at home itself. And hot water bag, of course. Hot water yeah. bag. Yeah. Now, doctor, uh, there are a lot of like awareness campaigns nowadays mm -hmm. are conducted in every schools as well right. uh, to have a proper idea about the menstrual hygiene, which is very important. Absolutely. So uh, how hospitals or how you guys plan up uh, to aware people, aware the school, school, uh, school students and as well as the teachers as well mm -hmm. to guide them like how to look up to their or how to take care of their menstrual hygiene? Yeah, absolutely. Menstrual hygiene, as we've mm -hmm. said, 28 May is celebrated International Menstrual Hygiene Day. Mm -hmm. Menstrual hygiene is not only taking care of oneself during mm -hmm. the days of menstruation, but also mm -hmm. taking care of your environment in the way how we dispose the sanitary products. That is very important. That is very, very important. Mm -hmm. So we need to create awareness of women about how to take care of themselves during periods mm -hmm. so that they don't miss out on schools, they don't miss out on work, it doesn't mm -hmm. affect the economy. And also to tell you what products are most suitable mm -hmm. and how to, be, how to dispose them without affecting our environment, okay. not uh, increasing the sanitary load on the mm -hmm. earth. Okay, and also it uh, includes uh, the like change and the timing of your pads as well, like yeah. uh, which is the right time, like how long you should uh, apply the pad and how long you should change your pad frequently in a day. Yeah, ideally, see, the changing of pad depends on the flow, mm -hmm. if as and when required. But mm -hmm. even if during the less flow days, mm -hmm. ideally you should change your pad three times a day. It's not that there's no bleeding and you stay with that pad the whole mm -hmm. day. No, you have to change it three times a day wash your genital parts with a gentle mm -hmm. uh, detergent which are available with mm -hmm. a with a with a 
uh, mm. chemical consistency which is, does not change the pH and we should not okay. do douching. That means putting detergents inside the vaginal cavity. Mm -hmm. uh, that changes the pH and that leads to infections which will go up to the uterus, to the tubes and it mm -hmm. spreads. And then um, uh, ablutting, mm -hmm. like after passing your stool, it's it's a common practice mm -hmm. to wash from front, from back to front, front, which is a wrong practice. Okay. Actually, okay. it's a wrong practice because mm -hmm. from back you are getting all the organisms. You are bringing it to the front, mm -hmm. so the movement should be from front to back. These are okay. very very small very, things. Very very small things, but basic it's things, very, very important, important things. right? Mm. And then to keep it dry, apply some dusting antifungal powders mm -hmm. and wear loose cotton clothes. Mm -hmm. Drink lots of water go mm -hmm. to the toilet mm -hmm. that's it mm -hmm. and what suggestions you would like to give like suppose uh, the person or the girl is having periods and she has to go to for school mm -hmm. or the one who comes for work so what are the basic things that one person can take care if he or she I means like if she has to like take care of her things like to carry the menstrual hygiene products yeah. and also if they have to use the public toilets what are the things they can do it See, they can uh, they can carry a mm. bag that they say it should be a covered bag. You should mm -hmm. not carry the sanitary napkin among all the other things because mm -hmm. it uh, then it will catch on dust. Okay. So you have a small pouch separately, mm -hmm. maybe with some wipes, sanitary mm. napkins, or a small mm -hmm. towel. Cotton towel will also do. Mm. But it is the duty of the society of us to provide them with running water, mm -hmm. with a um, toilet which has a door which can be latched with mm. soap. So that is the on the duty of the providers. And why do only we talk about women? Like men also play an important role Absolutely. because if we talk about home or mm. a father yeah. or a husband or yeah. anyone at home being there, so they play an important role like during these days, like you got go through a lot of mood swings as well. So those mood swings have to be tackled <laughs> by these men at Place. Absolutely. So, uh, how? Uh, what suggestions do you give when they visit your hospitals or mm. for some other reasons as well? So, of course, uh, you also counsel them for right. these things as well. You say, don't argue mm -hmm. with your partner during these days. Uh -huh. Just say yes. <laughs> uh -huh. It's actually, it's especially a very Especially the young girls, especially yeah. the young girls like, uh, who have a lot of questions in their mind like when they have their first periods or maybe it's a lot of questions of what they are going through. So, at that point in time, it's not only the mothers the or fathers. the female section yeah. at home, but they're there should be the male section also Absolutely. who should have a proper knowledge and give them a proper knowledge about I, it. Actually, I think these chapters are already included in the hmm. school curriculum hmm. of them, like reproductive organs, how they function. But I think we should discuss openly in the family. Hmm. There shouldn't be a taboo around the menstruation, hmm. that it is something to be hidden, something Mm. Like oh, it's to be kept a secret. No, everybody mm -hmm. should be made part. Then only the girl mm -hmm. or woman. And depending can on the comfort zone as well. Eh? Exactly. Maybe. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. even in the office, everybody should be cooperative. Mm -hmm. But it's not that you go and you see. You cannot uh, what you say. Um, you cannot discriminate anybody on the basis of menstruation as it happens in our society. Mm -hmm. That's again, uh, it's a violation of human rights. Mm -hmm. Okay. So mm -hmm. uh, the whole society, the teachers, the employers, the factory owners, everybody has to be involved and have to give that space to the woman mm -hmm. and mainly they have to provide with the basic uh, facility of running water, soap and a latch door mm -hmm. and a uh, covered dustbin. Okay. These four things are the basic needs of mm -hmm. each woman and girl. Okay. Now, doctor, any kind of like any common problem of menstruation. Mm -hmm. So, if, uh, if the person comes to your hospital, mm -hmm. so what is the diagnosis part, doctor? Treatment part, of course, but first of all, one has to be get proper diagnosis as yeah. well. So what is the first thing? Technologies have advanced nowadays. Yeah, yeah. So what is first the first is thing? Examination, hmm. proper examination, physical examination, proper examination, like blood pressure, hmm. Hmm. check uh, the blood pressure, pulse, check hmm. her abdomen if there is any obvious lump or any abnormality. Hmm. Then do a basic ultrasound, okay. hemoglobin, thyroid, all hmm. these are the basic tests. Hmm. Check the weight. Hmm. These are the, and above all reassurance for the mother, for the sister. Hmm. Reassurance hmm. has a big role. Hmm. Okay. Now, if we talk about the dietary part, doctor, mm. that is very important. Mm. You uh, already mentioned that we should include leafy vegetables and also, yeah, fibers uh, included in our food as well. Now, talking about the exercises as well, the lifestyle changing modalities mm. also. So, what would you want to tell? What stress? I you would want say to put that in include this? a bit of physical activity mm -hmm. in your lifestyle, not during the periods. Okay. It's during the dry days because mm -hmm. during the periods day, don't exert yourself. This will. Exerve, uh, this will increase your symptoms. But the other days, hmm. a bit of walking, maybe at least half an hour, or exercise, or yoga, hmm. or a bit of Zumba, whatever it is, whatever suits you best, include it. Hmm. And don't uh, sit for too long. 
Okay. For uh, sitting for one hour, then. So you just suggest to have a walk. Walk around, yeah, mm -hmm. or move your legs or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. nowadays there are lots of apps which count your steps and all. You can use them. Okay. They are very helpful okay. because if you sit for too long, I think they beep mm -hmm. that you're sitting. Mm -hmm. So you can just walk around. Mm -hmm. That will improve your blood circulation mm -hmm. and everything. Okay. Now, any uh, any uh, like uh, any history or anything like you would like to share with us? Any patient has come to you and it would it was uh, very difficult for you or uh, to make uh, her understand or make or counsel the pa parents uh, or the attendants who have come with the patient. Like uh, the person is going through this kind of problem. It happens with you as well. I'll sometimes. tell you one interesting case about mm -hmm. this this menorah. Mm. One girl, like she was not, she didn't get her menarche. Mm -hmm. She was say around 14 years, she didn't get her menarche, but every month she was getting the cyclical pain, okay. severe cyclical pain. Mm -hmm. So her parents were worried, her relatives were worried. They brought her, we did, a, we did an ultrasound, a 3D mm. ultrasound, and we found out there was a congenital anomaly in the development of the uterus. Okay. So there are one segment of girl, women who mm -hmm. have very small segment, but since you're asking, that's why I'm telling you, mm. rare case where there was a developmental anomaly. anomaly. Okay. That means there was a uh, there was no communication between mm -hmm. the outside and the inside, mm. the, like the uterus, the cervix, the vagina should be a continuous, continuous passage. passage. But there was a septum. That okay. means the cervix was not mm -hmm. formed. So she was bleeding every month. It was mm -hmm. accumulating in the uterus, okay. but there was no bleeding outside. No passage. No passage. So uh -huh. then she went underwent the procedure. She was fine. Okay. Okay. So now she's fine. She's fine. Okay. And then there are cases where the uterus should be one, but there are two mm -hmm. uterus. So those congenital women with congenital anomalies also have excessive periods pains. Mm -hmm. So this is these are very rare findings, not mm -hmm. to be taken serious. Not to take. In the I'm, I don't mean seriously. Mm -hmm. I mean like but these don't are rare get panicked. Findings? Yeah. yeah. Don't get panicked yeah. because these are rare findings, and we are there. To find out all that. Okay, okay. okay. Dr. We are really short of time, so yeah. what message you would like to give our viewers who are watching our show? I would like to say that uh, don't create taboo around menstruation. Menstruation is normal. Take care of yourself very nicely and the rest of the family, the office, the school, they should be aware of the problems related to menstruation and hand handle it with grace, without discrimination. All right. Thank you so Thank much, you. Doctor, for joining to Good Thank Life, you, the Health Show. Thank you so much. And with this, we have come to the end of the show, viewers. And we hope that we were able to answer all your queries in the best possible way. In our next episode, we will be discussing on some other important health issues. Till then, stay healthy, stay fit and keep watching Northeast Live. Goodbye.